One day later, Mike Schilt is still not the manager of the St. Louis Cardinals, and it still just doesn't sit completely right. Talking about that a little bit more, breaking down a little bit of the craziness of Game 5 of the National League Division Series, and then getting you what was supposed to be yesterday's episode, talking about the bullpen of the Cardinals reliever of the year. All that more on today's episode of Locked on Cardinals. You are Locked on Cardinals. Your daily St. Louis Cardinals podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome into the Locked On Cardinals podcast for Friday, October the 15th. Happy Friday, everybody. I am your host for the show, Lucas Smith. Thanks for making Locked On Cardinals your first listen of the day. We're brought to you today by Spotify Green Room. It's going to be a bit of a piece together episode, a little bit of, of talking about Mike Schilt in the playoffs, and as well as an episode that was recorded yesterday, uh, talking about the bullpen, um, both how they stack up in terms of the league and individual performances. Um, so we'll kind of piece together today's episode and go through it. But this first portion will be mainly focused on Mike Schilt and just how it doesn't completely sit right. So thanks for tuning in today. Happy Friday, everybody. Uh, let's just go ahead and get right into it because there's no sense in wasting too much time here. Um, a lot of articles were written yesterday. A lot of speculation was talked about yesterday. A lot of opinion shared. Um, and, you know, every opinion is valid and all everything of that nature. But while, while I, I can see both sides to, to the argument, I can see both sides to the situation where the past success doesn't necessarily guarantee future success. If you disagree with, with the person that's hiring you, then, you know, I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't know. I, I can see both sides, like I said, of – of Mike Schultz had some success with the Cardinals, so why would you fire him? Versus if, if you if you have differences, if the boss has a difference with you, um, then it, it's ultimately his decision. Is that the right decision for the boss to make just because he has a difference with you? That's the different discussion. But I can see both sides of the, of the Mike Schultz debate of whether or not he should have been let go or not. I think the biggest thing to me is where do the Cardinals go from here? Because the last two hires have been either internal in Mike Schilt or somebody that has had few past ties with the Cardinals and Mike Matheny. There's one perspective that could say, hey, the Cardinals should go outside the organization here, completely outside. But also knowing the current ownership group, will they do that? Or do they want at least somebody with remote ties to the St. Louis Cardinals and with the organization? So the philosophical differences could be a little bit more of the same. I don't know. Um it just it's just a matter of where the Cardinals want to go. What are and again, that's something that we're going to have to speculate on. What are those philosophical differences that John Mozeliak was talking about? Who is somebody that he can bring in that has the same philosophy or a similar philosophy so that they don't get let go midway or partway through the contract? They're almost to the end of the contract. Mike Schultz had one year remaining. I do think it's interesting that. John Mozeliak did say that Jeff Albert, by name, is under contract and will likely return next season. So it's interesting that he brings that name up. And uh, again, we don't have access to the to the Zoom recording just of what quotes that people have tweeted out and shared out in their respective articles. Um, but uh, yeah, I just can't get... I, I talked about a lot about yesterday of how this news w- was shocking and didn't really believe it. And today, it just continues to, to not sit right with me. I don't know if it's because I disagree with it or not. I'm like I'm still trying to formulate my opinion on it, to be quite honest, and just to be frank with you all. Um, I don't know if it's because I don't agree with it. I don't know if it's because I, I don't understand it. I don't know if it's because there's still information on the table that I would like to know. Maybe I'll never know that, and that's okay. I'm not meant to know. We as humans are not meant to know everything that goes on in this life, uh, both sports world and beyond. But there's just something about this move that doesn't fit, doesn't feel quite right, whether it it was Mike Schilt being treated poorly or being treated wrongly by this front office, or if it was just simply disag- me disagreeing with the front office. That, that's something I'll have to decipher through, and we'll talk more and more about that as we go along here um, on the Locked On Cardinals podcast as we discuss this this news and where the Cardinals do indeed go from here. But where do they go from here? It's going to be very interesting to see what comes out in the next couple of days, weeks. Most likely won't be till after the postseason is over. And we'll talk about the postseason and coming up in just a moment. Um, but it, 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 will, it will be fascinating. There, there's no question about that. I have zero question in my mind that it's going to be interesting. And there's going to be a lot of opinion shared. Because 
Mike Schilt had success. There's no, there's zero denying the fact that Mike Schilt had success as the Cardinals manager. You could argue how he got it, whether it was some based on just some historical fluke in certain areas. You, you could argue certain things. You could still argue that even despite the success, you didn't agree with his bullpen management. You didn't agree with yada, yada, yada. You can't argue the fact that he's had success, and I am not arguing that fact. I'm telling you all that you can't argue it. I am arguing the fact that I can understand, I can comprehend, I can wrap my head around, at least I think I can, the idea that the front office, or at least a member of the front office and his staff and Mike Schilt did not agree on the future of this team. And the future of a major league baseball team was a very important thing to agree on. Did the front office go about this the right way and just straight up firing him? I, I don't I don't know. We don't know all what goes on behind closed doors, and that's okay. We shouldn't know. But where they go from here, I think, is the most important factor. Because there are going to be some people that if they hire um, somebody from Schultz staff and Oliver Marmol, they Jeff Albert, some people are going to be upset at that. And then you're going to have some people that say, we want a completely different outside voice, somebody that has little to no ties with the Cardinal organization. Or you're going to want somebody with some managerial experience that has ties to the Cardinal organization or coaching experience. Because the last two Cardinal managers had zero major league managing experience before they took over the job. Mike Matheny played for a long time and still manages to this day. Mike Schilt has been a coach and manager at other levels for the last 15 some odd years. But no major league managerial level experience. Maybe that's something that Mosellock wants in, 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 in the next candidate. And that I understand. But then again, you also have to say to yourself, well, Mike Schilt had just garnered three years of managerial experience. And when you look at some of the numbers, they're pretty good. So again, I see both sides of this argument. It's still mind boggling. It doesn't sit well with me, just to be quite honest. And I'm not saying that, you know, I hate the Cardinals now or hate John Mozeliak or anything of that nature. People make their own decisions, but I'm going to wait to see where this goes out before I give, you know, necessarily a huge hot take on the, on the, on the subject, to be honest with you guys. And just because I don't, I don't think the story is over. I really don't. I think there's something more to it. Not like ominous or ooh and ah, but I just think that, that there's simply more to it than just philosophical differences. And if there's not, then there's not. But it, it would be hard pressed for me to, to imagine there 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 not be. Um, so we'll we'll see where it goes from here um, in terms of who the Cardinals hire. I wish the best to Mike Schilt. I don't think I said that yesterday, but I wish the best to Mike Schilt. I hope he does get another job in Major League Baseball. He's he's a baseball guy. You know, people said that a lot about him, and I do hope that he gets another job um, at some point um, in 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 baseball. So we'll talk about that um, again throughout the, the off season. But before we take our first break, uh, I do want to talk about Game Five of the National League Division Series. What a game! What a series! A shame it had to end in five games. This I think is and if you're going to have an Exhibit A or uh, Evidence A for why the why baseball could use a different postseason structure. That series is why. That series needed to go more than five games. Baseball needs that kind of series in the National League Championship Series. Because in my opinion, those are two, or those are the top two teams in the National League. Those two teams need to be playing each other in the National League Championship Series. I'm not going to propose a new playoff format right now. I'm not going to propose anything drastic, but I do think that there's something to be said of the best teams in the National League just played a five-game series instead of a seven-game series, and that series had seven games written all over it. And a quick note on how it ended. Not going to get into it too much. I don't like bashing umpires. I'm an umpire. Things happen. No matter what, that is a tough way to end a game. That is a tough way to end a season. That is a tough way to end a playoff series. That is a brutal way to end a Game 5 winner-go-home playoff series in a series that has brought this baseball fan, uh, the baseball fan base, so much joy and excitement and everything of that nature. A tough way to end it. There's a part of me that that wants more replay involved in, in baseball. The replay system needs to be fixed, but... You know, Gabe Morales thought he had, you know, at the, the, the simplest of levels, Gabe Morales thought he saw a check swing and called it a swing. Or thought, thought he saw a swing and called it a swing. Was it a swing? Probably not. Should that play be refutable? Maybe. 
tough way to end a series. Good luck to the Dodgers going forward. One heck of a season for the San Francisco Giants. Go give Ben Casper, host of Locked On Giants, a listen. He deserves it. He's been loving that team and covering that team for a long time. He, he go give go give him a listen. Go give him a follow on Twitter. So that'll do it for the, the first segment. So just kind of a heads up for for going forward here. This these next two segments were recorded yesterday. So it's going to be cut up a little bit. Uh, they were recorded yesterday. So without knowledge of the Mike Schilt firing, uh, Mike Schilt parting ways. So if uh, I believe I mentioned a couple times bullpen management, et cetera, et cetera. Um, if that comes up, and please note that it was recorded before the, the Schilt news, um, and, and we'll go from there with that. But uh, so just kind of a kind of a disclaimer. So we'll take one break here. We'll talk about the bullpen in terms of how it goes throughout the rest of the league, and then we'll talk about the Cardinals reliever of the year in segment number three. Uh, but before we get there, I do want to tell you about the best taste protein bar in the business and that is built bar i'm going to give you three reasons why you need to order built bar today first of all they're delicious here are the flavors coconut cherry bar seal raspberry mint brownie double chocolate salted caramel strawberry orange cookies and cream german chocolate mm. there's something for everyone i like the double chocolate but if you can't decide get yourself a mixed box you'll get two of each of the nine flavors so not only are these built bars Tasty. They are healthy as well because after all, they are a protein bar. You've got 17 to 18 grams of protein in these bars. Calories ranging from 130 to 180, 4 to 5 grams of sugar, and 4 to 5 grams of net carbs. All amazing flavors, all tasty, all healthy. Order today. Get whatever flavor you like and make sure, and you're going to know that it's healthy. So that's two reasons. The third reason, you can save some money with the promo code LOCKED15 when you order at Built.com. Because that LOCKED15 promo code gets you 15% off your order of these incredible tasting, incredibly healthy protein bars. Use promo code LOCKED15 at checkout at Built.com. Get yourself some Built Bars today. So once again, this is going to be, be my segue. Uh, I'll cut it up as best I can. So this will be segue into segment number two uh, of the show today. So I hope you enjoy the rest of Locked On Cardinals. And again, these two segments were recorded yesterday before the Mike Schilt news. So enjoy. I'm going to start with just kind of how the Cardinal bullpen uh, compared to the whole year. Because this Cardinal bullpen, as I mentioned in the open on YouTube, at times it was really, really, really good. And at other times it just was not. And other times you didn't have any reliable arms in the pen on, on any given night. You, you kind of had to, to mix and match and kind of hope and pray. But but overall, the, the numbers bear out to be about average to just above average in certain categories. And I think that this bullpen is one that was overused in the beginning of the year. Because you had two times out of every uh, five, two, two times in your rotation in John Gant and Daniel Ponce de Leon, where starters weren't, that they, they just weren't going five innings. They, they were going four innings, you know, on, on a good day, they were going five, but on an average day, they were going three or four innings. So you had a bullpen that was really, really overused early on to start the season because you had starters that just weren't producing. You had starters weren't that weren't going deep into games. And yeah, it might have worked for a little bit early in the season, but we saw, especially with the, the, the big three, as they were called early on in the season, or as I called them early on in the season, in Giovanni Gallegos, Alex Reyes, and Genesis Cabrera, they were lights out to start the season. Uh, for, for the most part. And then you start to get to June, July, and August, and you start to, to see them struggle a little bit more here and there, and it was because of overuse. And at that time, the Cardinals didn't really have anybody that, that could step up. You had Wade LeBlanc step up a little bit, but that was mainly in a starter role. Luis Garcia, TJ McFarland ended up stepping up in the end, but this is a bullpen that really had to, to, to find its groove once the, the big three weren't cutting it. Because Ryan Helsley had his moments, but also had his really bad moments. Andrew Miller didn't really cut it out for most of the year. Justin Miller, the same thing there. Junior Fernandez had a couple of good outings here and there, but also struggled at a certain point of the season. And not to say that bullpen arms or anybody is going to have a perfect season, but you'd like to see a little bit more consistency overall from this bullpen next season, which could be really good. You're going to get Jordan Hicks back. That's going to be a plus. You're going to have Giovanni Gallegos hopefully rested, and hopefully the starters can go deeper in a game so that you're not overusing bullpen guys each and every night. Um, and I, I think it'd be beneficial to bring TJ McFarland and Luis Garcia back uh, in, in the in a bullpen role, and then we'll see what we can do with Alex Reyes. But let's go and look at some numbers because I'm big on numbers and see how the Cardinals bullpen stacked overall um, 
compared to to the rest of the league in terms in terms of bullpen. When you're looking at ERA, and again, bullpen ERA isn't really the best number to go at. The Cardinals were just about average when you're looking at uh, compared to the rest of the major leagues. Uh, well, that's the, the criteria we'll be looking at. 3.97 ERA, 159 games. Um, and when you're looking at the number of, of games, that was um, 159 was, was the – it was a lot of games, but when you're looking at innings, I guess I should say it's a better, better way to go about it. Um, the, the Cardinals still had a fair amount of, of innings at 584 and a third innings going to the 21st uh, least in the bottom of the league. So not a lot of innings pitched, I guess I should say. I misspoke there a couple times. My apologies. Um, so the bullpen was overused early, but you saw the starters started to go deeper into games during that 17-game winning streak. That, that 17 game winning streak when you had starters going deeper into games, you didn't have to use the bullpen that much. That, that in my opinion, is why you see the Cardinals stacking up at 21st in, in the major leagues at 584 and one third innings pitched out of the bullpen, according to MLB.com. Um, but again, you got to look at more than just the the ERA. So let, let's look at more than just the ERA. Whip for the Cardinal bullpen 1.32. That means they're averaging about 1.3 base runners inning walks plus hits over innings pitch. That does not come in. Count errors, obviously. That was seven, the seventeenth um, number seventeen in the league. Lowest was San Francisco Giants at one one three. So definitely some room to improve because, especially as, as the bullpen arm, you want to keep that number really low because you don't want to be facing too many runners on base in a given inning. Uh, that that just seems pretty pretty obvious to say, but wanted to say that. And then the batting average against was actually very good. You know, you, you see some of these numbers be middle of the pack, some below, but the batting average against was really good as opponents against the Cardinal bullpen hit just 222. That's tied with a second lowest in the major leagues, tied with the Giants. The only one that had a batting average lower was the Los Angeles Dodgers at 205. Um, the Tampa Bay Rays were very close to the Cardinals at 224. The Yankees were at 225. Cubs actually come in at 226, which I thought was surprising, but the average wasn't wasn't terrible against the, the Cardinal bullpen, so that, that's, that's a positive. All right, we're looking at the positives and negatives of these numbers that um, when, when you're looking at it, looking at some more kind, kind of deeper number, the, the expanded numbers, uh, strikeouts per nine for the bullpen was to the 23rd um, highest, so not very high at 886. And this is the number that, that really, really, really kills it. The, the dead last in this category, I'll let you think about it for a second, walks per nine. Cardinal bullpen members walked 4.54 batters for every nine innings. That is in the bottom of the barrel, 30th place, last place in the National League, last place in the American or the major leagues. That just can't happen next season. Got to have a better walk rate. Got to be able to throw more strikes. Breaking the record for most bases loaded walks in a season as a pitching staff, but walks were a major problem. And it's cliche, it sounds simple, but this pitching staff needs to throw more strikes next season out of the bullpen. Walks will absolutely kill you. One out, two out, nobody out. Lead off walks. Whatever walks you have, especially out of the bullpen, could absolutely kill a team. Whether it's in one game, a series, whatever it might be, you have um, you, you just can't have walks in, in, in the bullpen like that. You can't have that amount of walks either. I mean, 4.5 walks for every nine innings, that is just not not a good number overall. Just, just period. So that you look, you have the really good numbers in terms of the batting average against, and you have a really bad number against the uh, walks per nine. Other numbers I wanted to get into, looking at stacking up against the league. Cardinals actually had a ended up with a pretty high inherited runner scoring position, or inherited runner scoring percentage rather, thirty seven percent. Only um, teams that had a higher percentage: Rockies, Reds, Orioles, Phillies, and Twins. Not exactly the company you want to be in. Inherited runner scoring percentage um, is the amount of inherited runners that score. So if, if uh, somebody comes in with runners on first and second and one of those runners scores, that ends up being a 50% inherited runner scoring position. That number is key because you really want to have somebody that can come in in a high leverage situation with runners on base and put up a zero. Cardinals haven't necessarily had that. That was one of Alex Reyes's big problems this season. We, we, we saw that even as recently as the National League wild card game. So when you're stacking up this bullpen against the rest of Major League Baseball, you have some good, some bad, but you get it to be just about average, maybe slightly above, but just about average for this bullpen. And a playoff team needs a better bullpen. Plain and simple, you just the Cardinals needed the, the, the good bullpen that they saw in the second half throughout the entirety of the year. 
better bullpen management, maybe, but just a better bullpen in general would have obviously aided this team because a better anything aids any team at any time. So that's how it's stacked up against the, the general part of the league. Now we're going to get into kind of some individual performances. Who who did well? Who did poorly? Because uh, the Cardinals definitely did have some, some solid performances this season out of that bullpen. They 100% did. There's no denying that. So we're going to go ahead and get into those numbers here coming up in just a moment. Uh, before we get there, I want to tell you guys about the number one spot for all of your pro and college football action this season, as well as hockey that has started, and that is Bet Online. Bet Online has a new and updated site and interface. So they have more odds, more props, more contests, more ways for you to win some money. They are the number one source for everything football. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today. And when you sign up, you can receive a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. And that promo code to get that 50% welcome bonus, locked on. L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N, locked on, gets you a 50% welcome bonus when you sign up. So many reasons to sign up, and free money is one of them. Whether it's football, basketball, baseball, boxing, hockey, or your favorite Vegas casino games, don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers for this 2021 football season. Bet Online remains the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports. Bet Online is where the game starts. Cardinal Bullpen, like as I mentioned, had some, some ups, it had some downs. Overall, you can't be overly disappointed with this Cardinal bullpen, but there are definitely some things to, to be improved upon. We're going to start with, with, with the big three. Did they end up being the big three? Maybe not. Maybe they had some, some times later in the year where they were the, the, the low three, the small three, but we're going to start with them looking at their individual performances. Alex Reyes, 10 and eight on the year, 69 games, 3.24 ERA, 72 and a third innings pitch. So not very many games going over an inning. Give up nine home runs, had an ERA plus of 120. That's respectable. A fielding independent pitching of 4.4. So the difference in the fielding independent pitching and the ERA is 1.16 negative. That's not great. And his whip was brutal, 1.355. His walks per nine, 6.5. That was the highest among the Cardinals relievers outside of John Gant this season, who had a 6.6 walks per nine. Not good. Tyler Webb, uh, well, or excuse me, not Tyler Webb. Uh, Alex Reyes cannot walk that many better. She had an 11.8 strikeouts per nine. That's solid. But 1.83 strikeouts for every walk needs to be increased. You, you just can't have your closer that pitching like that, having that many walks. So that, that, that was the big knock on Reyes. Obviously, he gave up some big-time home runs, including one in the ninth inning in the wild card game. I think Reyes is better than that. I think that Reyes is going to rebound next season, whether he's a starter or a reliever. But, but the fact of the matter is, you need to throw more strikes. Plain and simple. I'm not going to spend too much time on Reyes just because it's been said it's time and time again that he just needs to throw more strikes. I think his stuff will play at the major league level. He's just got to hone it in and control it. Somebody who did have some good control, that was Giovanni Gallegos. 3.02 ERA and 80 and a third innings pitch. By far the most out of any Cardinal reliever on the season. Fielding independent pitching of 2.75. It's pretty good considering his area was, was 3.02. You want those numbers to be pretty close. His whip was under 1.884. Again, very solid. Only walked 2.2 batters per nine and a 10.6 strikeouts per nine. He had some moments that he, he was looked looked really flat. He was overused, and I, I understand that, but Giovanni Gallegos was, was top-notch for most of the year. Danny McLaughlin talked about it all the time on the broadcast that when he had a day of rest, he was solid. He tended to be solid the next day. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Giovanni Gallegos, I, I think, was, you know, I'll get to the award here in a little bit, but numbers alone, he was solid. And I'll, I'll just leave it at that and talk a little bit more about that in a little bit. The other member of the big three, Henesis Cabrera, he pitched in 70 innings, 3.73 ERA, fielding independent pitching of 3.28, showing that he might have gotten a little bit unlucky. Whip of 1.257, not great. Walks per nine, 4.6. Again, really high. Don't want that number to be there. It, it's, it's just one of those things of he's got the stuff, just like Alex Reyes. He's got the stuff. And I love the, the, the attitude he's got on the mound. You know, his his K-hop that he has when he strikes somebody out, he kind of hops his little mini squat or whatever. I think that's great. I love the energy he brings. I think he's just got to put it together. I think Alex Reyes could benefit maybe from going to the starting rotation. I would really love Cabrera to stay in that reliever role. I think his stuff is just explosive. 
And I think that if you are able to hone in on him, the ability to just, you know, fastball, curveball, maybe a change it, but just two or three pitches, keep it simple, keep it explosive, because his stuff is explosive, that is solid. I think he could be a legit lethal weapon in the bullpen. Let's say Reyes does go to the starting rotation just for this hypothetical situation. You have Cabrera Ray, or Cabrera Gallegos to close out the game. You've also got a Ryan Helsley, who I think is going to be better than his numbers have shown. I'm not giving up on Helsley yet, so that's solid. You've got TJ McFarland. You've got Luis Garcia. Those four to five arms right there are going to be solid for you, are going to be solid for you. No question about it in my mind, especially if Helsley can get it right. And if McFarland and Garcia can finish – or to continue the job, rather, they started finishing off 2021 on a strong note. Um, moving on down the line, Ryan Helsey, as I mentioned, his numbers weren't great. He had a 4.56 ERA, a 1.4 whip, 5.1 walks per nine. But he had some, some some Houdini acts, as Derek Gould likes to put it. Uh, Ryan Helsey, the Houdini of not letting inherited runners score. Andrew Miller, likely his, you know, one, maybe possibly one of his final seasons, a 4.75 ERA and 36 innings pitched. But let's look at, at two of the guys that, that came in and, and really did a, did a nice job. TJ McFarlane's ERA, 256 and 38 and two thirds of an innings pitch. His whip was just over one at 1.06. An ERA plus for TJ McFarland of 153. Way above average. Way above average. Only walking 2.1 walks or walking 2.1 batters per nine innings, giving up less than a home run per nine. He was a double play machine. He was incredible. He, he's. One of those guys that is not going to blow you away with his stuff. He's just not. But he is going to blow you away with the results. His results were fantastic. He had a couple bad starts early, but he – or appearances early. But he really turned it around and really gave the Cardinals a lot. And I think that he, he was under the radar a lot a lot of the times. And Luis Garcia, his ERA was a little bit higher at 3-2-4, but his ERA plus of 121 was impressive. His footing independent pitching was 2.72, so that's good. Whip was under one. Walks per nine at just 2.2. Struck out 9.2. His stuff plays as well, as Brad Thompson liked to talk about a lot with that heavy sinker, the slider as well. He could be a weapon out of there. He's a little older, 34 years old, so whether he comes back or not it remains to be seen. But a young guy that I really like throughout the course of this season, Cody Whitley. I don't think he's being talked about enough. Only 25 in the third innings pitch due to injury and going back down. But a 2.49 ERA in those 25 games, an ERA plus of 158, small sample size on that, I get it. But a whip of just 1.066, struck out 9.6 batters per nine innings. Walks were a little high at 4.3. He walked... Uh, 12 batters in those 25 and a third innings pitched. But I really like Cody Whitley's stuff. Over the top, nice. I just think his, his stuff will play. I really like Cody Whitley. He could be a weapon. I, he showed that a little bit last even as well. So I think Cody Whitley could be a kind of a dark horse, maybe not necessarily an X factor, but could be something in there in the Cardinal bullpen is to say, okay, if this guy's going to be solid, this guy is going to be like he's going to make the bullpen gel. He's going to give Mike Schultz another option out of that bullpen to really make this bullpen go to another level. Because I, I love what I saw from Cody Whitley majority of the season. I think he could be solid. Outside of that, some of the, the, the clunkers, if you were Junior Fernandez, not good. Tyler Webb, not good. Not even going to spend time talking about Tyler Webb as he was DFA earlier in the year. Justin Miller had a couple had that one good outing in San Francisco since after that wasn't very good. Seth Elledge disappointed in his in his uh, season in the area north of four um, in a whip north of one and a half at 1.7, almost two, and that's not good. Matt Carpenter had a zero ear, right? That's pretty solid. <laughs> Maybe Matt Carpenter will, will win reliever of the year. That coming up in just a minute. Uh, Roel Ramirez did not do well in his one third innings as well. So you had some good, some bad. You know, Ponce de Leon, 6 one ERA. I think it's time for the Cardinals to move on from Ponce de Leon. I really do. But then again, that, that's a discussion for a different time. We're running out of time here in this segment. So we're going to go ahead and get to the reliever of the year. Giovanni Gallegos. Cardinals 2021 reliever of the year on the Locked on Cardinals podcast. Congratulations to Mr. Gallegos winning this wonderful, fantastic um, honor. Uh, and I think that he, he was just a steady horse for the Cardinals front majority of the season. He, he's a guy that I love the fastball slider combination. I think he's got one of the filthiest sliders in baseball. He, you have so much confidence. I have so much confidence 
when I think about Giovanni Gallegos, the, the confidence for me just goes through the roof when he comes into a game, whether it's with runners on or not. And if anybody in that bullpen, I think that he gives me the most confidence for when he comes into a baseball game. Let me know who you guys think gives you the most confidence, but I think based on the intangible factor of that and the fact that he was able to have the numbers that he did, even giving up a couple of earned runs later in the season, I think that's, that speaks volumes. Would you, would you like to, to the bullpen be managed a little bit better? Maybe. But I, I just love what Gallegos did this season, what, what he brought this season. So that's why he is my 2021 reliever of the year for the St. Louis Cardinals. So congratulations. So overall, the bullpen, as I mentioned a couple of different times, some good, some bad. And I think that this bullpen has some bright spots to look forward to in 2022.